everyone, Gina with Belly Beads Paper Jewelry here today to bring you a tutorial on my roundest, roundest, roundest paper bead. Um, I had posted this on my Facebook page and I had an outpour of request on the measurements. Now, I don't want to repeat myself because I did put out a video on, um, on how to determine what size and shape of your bead you want and that would depend on the weight and the weight of the paper so if you haven't seen that go check that out first because that really goes into detail um, of how to get a round 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 bead too but these measurements I've actually adjusted so that's what this tutorial is for today it's um, new measurements and again these measurements that I give and it'll also be in the link below they're not going to work for you if you don't have the exact same tools I have. So um, whatever you're using, if it works for you, that's great. But I'm just letting you know that I'm using certain tools to give this result. And again, we're talking about different size paper and the weight of the paper and the different rollers. So if you're using any other type of rollers, that's great. Um, now, I used to use toothpicks, but I wanted to expand the sizes and shapes of my beads. And that's why I went with rollers. And these were my very first rollers and I love them. These are from Kelly Phillips Paper Bee Rollers and I'll have the link below. And after I loved them so much, they were getting really bad. I mean, they really looked really bad. And Kelly Phillips was kind enough to send me a whole bunch and she sponsored, sponsored one of my, uh, my, um, my tutorial so I you, you got to check that one out that's really awesome because I go into detail each um, roller and what type of size of the bead it comes out to look like it looks really good it's really I had a lot of fun doing that too so today I'm using the rollers I'm, this is my favorite one the red one and my blue one but I'm going to give you an idea of how I'm going to get this round bead and again we're going to go according to the paper weight. Now, this paper, I will show you, isn't that nice? It has all these little musical notes on it. This paper weight is 40 pounds and it's a single sheet. It didn't come out of a scrapbook pad. And I purchased it at Michael's Craft Store. And it doesn't, as I mentioned in my past tutorials, a lot of these papers and the paper pads don't give the weight size on um, the actual paper. So in the tutorial that I had, um, it I went into great detail on how you can determine what size, I'm sorry, what uh, of the weight of the paper is. So it, go check that out if you really wanna know what si uh, what's the paper weight of your, um, what you're dealing with. So this is a 40 pound paper weight. And um, I also have a 25 pound paperweight that I'm gonna work with. So we're gonna concentrate on today this round, round, round bead. And it rolls really well too. Now again, we're dealing with paper. So, I mean, you can only get it so round. Um, I've been working on this for about mm, seven months. I've been paper beading for less than a year and I really put a lot of time into it. I really enjoy it. I think it's very therapeutic. And um, I love it. So the pieces that come out of it, the jewelry pieces, and it, it's just amazing and I love it. So let's begin. Um, let's start off with, this is the red one I have and the red one from Kelly Phillips. And it's funny, you know, you see those initials? <laughs> um, my husband and I both have them and he gets um, very possessive of them now. So he put his initials on there so I just thought that was cute anyway all right so let's start this is the new these are the new measurements for this round bead I've already went ahead and I have a Cricut cut, um, cutter so this is automatically cut out for me by my Cricut and I love it it's already a nice clean cut but again I started out with a rotary cutter and it was fine but I cut in such enormous amounts because it's also a business for me. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so this works better for me. Um, so let's get started. So this paper is actually, it's a 40 pound paper and it's seven and a half millimeters uh, at the tip. And it is eight and a half inches 
in length and it tapers down. And I hope you can see that. All right, and then I have the second piece to it. And this is, hopefully you can see it, there you go. Three and a half inches, I'm sorry, three and a half millimeters at the top there. And then we have, um, it's four and a half inches tapered, okay? So let's get started. I'm gonna use my, um, my red roller. And remember, we always wanna condition our paper first. And that means to run your fingers through it because it is stiff and it allows for a better rolling um, through your roller. And there we go. And when you roll, everybody rolls differently and you're all gonna get the same result, it doesn't matter. But I roll this way and I give a little bit of a tug. Don't pull too hard because then you're gonna rip the paper. And don't roll too tight because you know what happens? It's really funny, um, but the, the, um, the sides of it, if you roll them too tight, I, I call them duck lips. <laughs> you, it looks like little duck lips that, <laughs> that appear and I don't like that. So I always make sure that, see how even they are on each side? There's no duck lips. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna keep rolling and you just wanna roll nice and slow. I get a little impatient and I go faster sometimes. And right towards the end, I'm gonna put some glue on that and then just go ahead and we're going to hold it right there. That's it. I'm going to get my second piece and I'm going to condition it, put a little bit of, run it through the glue stick or the glue, whatever you type of glue you're using. And I want to line it up right with the, um, the strip that ends. So where that ends and this is the beginning. And sometimes you lose it, so I kind of feel it right there. There we go. And I'm going to wrap it around. Now remember, your second strip is the most important strip because that's gonna dictate the, the size too. I mean, you're gonna have, make sure, see how I'm rolling? And I'm keeping everything in line and once you get really, and if you, the more practice that you have, you can go a little quicker. So I'm just doing this for um, video purposes. So, and then you just go ahead, make sure they're always lined up. Oh, look how pretty that is. And then I always run my um, bead through the, the glue stick. It kind of helps give it a little bit more of uh, keeping it all together there. But look at that. Is that awesome or what? No duck lips. <laughs> And we want to push it out, and there we go. It's a beautiful, perfect hole. And it's round. <laughs> All right, so now I want to show you, this is a 25 pound paper. And this is the same exact measurement, well, same, yes, it is the same exact measurements, except for the length. Now remember, the thinner the paper, the longer the strip. I know it may not make sense, but it does. Believe me, I've been doing this. It feels like it, it's not rocket science, but I feel like I've been in science class for a good nine months. Um, this is 29 centimeters, which is 11.42 inches. And it tapers down to three and a half millimeters. All right. And remember, seven and a half. I'll have all this down on the link there. But the thinner the paper, the longer the strip to make it round. And then we have the second piece which is the three and a half up at the top there. And it's four and a half uh, inches in length tapered down. Now, a lot of my rounds, I will um, cut them out in one strip where I don't need two strips. But because of the weight of this paper, it requires two strips. I know it does, may not make sense, but believe me, it does. Because I thought, well, why don't I just make one long strip? Yes, there are certain paper uh, weights that I do that with. But this one, the 25 pound, I do not. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use my red um, roller. And I conditioned my paper already. And I'm just going to continue rolling. I hope I'm in the camera. There we go. And remember, no duck lips. <laughs> just going to keep. And you just want to tuck those sides in. 
I know that's really strange to say the dark lips, but I remember when um, I was, my husband and I were up to like three in the morning one, one time and we were trying to perfect one of the, the sizes and I'm thinking, no, it's, it looks like duck lips. I don't like that. <laughs> it was kind of, kind of strange, but now that's what we, we call them when I don't want that type of size of bead. All right. Oh no, look at that. I love mistakes on the video. This is why I'm not going to edit it because I want everyone to see that. <laughs> so what do we do now? It's all curled up. We're going to do it again. See, I don't like getting, I like, I like to just go with the flow. And you just do it again. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't press hard enough with the glue. And here we go. But yes, I would certainly check out, if you haven't any tools, um, check out Kelly Phillips um, rollers. It's They're awesome. And what I love about her is because she um, stands behind all her products they're very, very sturdy. I love them. Um, yeah, that's, she's amazing. All right, so then I'm gonna get my second strip and run that through. And I'm going to attach that to the part where I ended. And remember, the second strip is so important. Really line that up right. Because that's going to be the outer layer of your beads. So you want to make sure, let's see if I can get close on this camera. I don't know if that's too close, but look at that. Oh, it's getting so loud. I love it. All right. There's the other side. And look at that. It almost looks like a wood bead. Now, again, these are unglazed. So remember, and I run it through my glue just to... Get anything that has, um, you know, any other flying little papers that are coming out of it. All right. So there we go. Look at that. I love it. It looks like a little wood piece. Now I want to try something else. I want to show you. Now I had rolled, actually, I had rolled this paper, the 25 pound paper weight, on this one, which was a um, larger pin. And it gave me a larger hole for my roller. But look at this. See how each each one manipulates it? Look, that almost looks like it has duck lips. <laughs> See the differences? I don't like this one. I like the round one. But again, it's I'm using a different um, a different tool. So that's how important it is. And if and again, if you want to use um, a larger pin, then you have to adjust your your um your measurements all right so again and I wanted to show you also look at these I have used so many I want I have to mention these uh, rollers again because they are just wonderful these rollers gave me all these different types of sizes um, this is my teardrops uh, let's, oh, these are my favorite too these are my small barrels and this one was actually rolled with this tiny one. It has a very, it's the smallest pin. It's the smallest pin, and that's the green one from um, Paper Bead Rollers. And there's that one. And here's some more round ones. Look at these round ones. They're so beautiful. I love them. These, I think, are the most roundest ones I've had. And again, these are matte finished. Some are glossed and some aren't. And that's what um, a lot of my pieces that I have are not uh, glossed, glazed over, because um, it's the particular theme I'm going with. But remember, when you are about glazing, and the way I glaze and everyone's asked me, I don't, after I'm complete, I, after I completed this, um, I always put a base coat. It could be any kind of base coat that you want, but you need a base coat. Remember, these are made out of wood. Okay, paper's wood. All right. And you have to, you, inside that core has got to be coated somehow. So make sure that, you know, I mean, and again, and if you don't do it and it works, that's great. But for me, what I found, I glazed, I just was playing around with it one time and I just glazed it without giving it any type of base coat. 
Well, when I went to go make jewelry, the inside of the core was coming out and the paper came, it just came out like paper because it wasn't secure enough. So it wasn't hard. And so my recommendation, I know a lot of you asked me about this. I personally, I dip it in PC petrifier and then I glaze them. Um, that's just to secure it. If I'm going to give, um, if I'm, if I'm making bracelets or jewelry pieces that, um, are going to be durable, I have got to ensure that they're not going to come apart. But again, that's me. And a lot of you out there don't use it. And I think your pieces are beautiful. And, um, so I just, again, I'm just giving you my opinion on how I feel that a bead should be coated. And, um, so that's it. So I, We'll take any type of comments. Just make sure that, um, that, you know, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can private message me. I'm on Facebook. I put the link below. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and click on the video on the, I'm sorry, click on the, uh, icon of the bell. So it will remind you of my next video coming up. And please, uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and share it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.